Hi, and welcome to the Integrated Rehab and Performance Golf Podcast. My name is Nick Curtis. I'm running the show here at the Integrated Rehab and Performance Center. And today we are talking about the ankle and foot, especially as it relates to the overhead deep squat test. Now, last week we had discussed the overhead deep squat test and all of its components. And today I want to focus in on that ankle complex, ankle and foot region to make sure that we are getting the most from this region and uh, it's not holding us back. Uh, this is a common issue in, in a lot of people is this ankle and foot mobility especially and I want to take that one step further and even talk about ways to optimize it even beyond just mobility but uh, truly being able to feel the ground with the foot and produce force through the foot and into the ground um, appropriately to get the most power from our swing. So without further ado let's discuss the ankle and all of its components. So first and foremost, when it comes to the ankle, we are looking to make sure we have enough dorsiflexion. And the overhead deep squat test uh, does a really good job of this globally, seeing in that overhead deep squat if we can achieve it. Um, and if we can't, ankle dorsiflexion is often a big uh, reason why. So even in that overhead deep squat test is we break it out into different components. And one of them is specifically looking at isolating ankle dorsiflexion. So what ankle dorsiflexion is, is just bringing the knee closer to over the toes as we keep our heel on the ground, right? So we are kind of closing that angle off uh, between the foot and the front of the shin. It's really important to be able to access that, especially when we're training um, in different ways that we train for golf. Um, that includes squats, uh, deadlifts, and split squats. Uh, lunges, things like that. Any way that we're training the lower body in, in the gym, um, it definitely holds us back if we don't have proper dorsiflexion. It also holds us back on the course and definitely in the way that we are able to feel the ground and get into our golf positions if we can't easily achieve appropriate ranges of ankle dorsiflexion. So a common reason for this is just uh, b bony interference in that range of motion. So uh, th there are many small bones in the foot and ankle that need to be able to glide and roll on each other to allow the knee to move forward over the foot. If these structures and these components stop rolling and gliding appropriately, uh, this can have a major impact on the ability to productively train and achieve golf positions, um, especially ones that require the need to move forward and keep our weight back. Um, so that's a, a big key component, especially if we consider like early extension where our hips shoot forward. Uh, when we bend our knees, a lot of people, if they don't have ankle dorsiflexion, is that forward knee bend allows us to keep our weight backwards. Without that range of motion, our weight has to start coming forward. And again, we, we are more susceptible to certain swing characteristics. Um, other common compensations are like bending the back or rolling the knees inwards towards each other. Um, all of these just trying to achieve more depth uh, when the ankles stop being able to do their job. And again, these are not effective ways to train in the gym or uh, play golf on the course. So besides just training issues and performance issues, we also see that this can lead to different injuries. Um, certainly at the knee and the low back, and you can only look at you know, Tiger Woods um, for an example there that we, we don't need to put any more stress on the low back and knees and hips and golfers as it is, right? So we wanna make sure that the ankles aren't going to produce higher chances of, of injury and compensation, uh, right? So some things that we like to do to address uh, bony restrictions in uh, dorsiflexion in the ankle and foot would include uh, an ankle dorsiflexion uh, banded mobility drill, as well as these ankle rockers with a band around the big toe, which helps us reintroduce that motion while providing some bony distraction where we're opening up space between these bones and then allowing them to start doing their job of gliding and rolling on each other again. So here I have an example of that banded dorsiflexion drill. Um, for this one, what we're doing is we have a band that's anchored low to the ground and our foot elevated. So we'd even want this angle between the band and our heel and our ankle here to be even higher. So coming up a little bit higher and something we can do there is even just putting a weight or even stepping on or holding this band to the ground just before our foot and that will increase and create that angle force pushing down and back. But the idea here 
is that we are rocking over our foot. We're keeping our heel on the surface there. It doesn't come up. And here we let that band distract and pull that talus bone backwards as we pull and push our knee forward over the toe. So this is dorsiflexion. This for me is max dorsiflexion. It's pretty good uh, where that shin and top of the foot angle is closing. And we just want to practice that as we rock in and out of that motion. And you find different angles to attack where you're going over kind of the, the pinky toe. And then you're going over the kind of the second toe and the big toe. And just finding those areas of restrictions and letting that uh, talus roll and glide in those different ways. And here's that other example where you kind of push down through it. That's something where you can do about 10 reps, slow and controlled, maybe through a breath cycle. Um, each time you shift forward and hang out there for a bit and then shift back. Now with this drill, what we're doing is we are pinning a band down under the head of the first metatarsal. So that's the innermost part of the foot. Let me fast forward here. So again, just under that first part of the foot, but not under the big toe. It's just short of the big toe right there. And then we're applying pressure down through the whole foot, but especially through there. And we want our foot to stay flat. So don't roll onto the inside edge of the foot. Keep the foot flat. Put some pressure into that band. And that head of the first metatarsal pressure is the only thing keeping that band from flying out. And then from there, we do some work where we open the hip by pulling our knee to the outside using our glute muscles. So there it was pulled to the outside. Right, we don't want our foot coming off the ground, so we keep the foot flat. And then we pull our knee towards the outside, hang out there for a couple seconds, maybe a breath, um, working on the mobility of tibial internal rotation. And that's really important because when we dorsiflex, we also expect the tibia to internally rotate. And we need to make sure that we have access to both ranges of motion to improve our ankle dorsiflexion. So again, we step over on top of this band we keep that first head of the metatarsal down, and then we use our glute to push our knee to the side, outward, and we make sure that our foot stays flat on the ground as the knee moves to the side, just like that. And that keeps us from uh, opening the foot and working more internal rotation and pronation into our foot. Now, besides the bony architecture of the ankle, we also have to deal with the musculature and fascia around there, which can also be causing the deficiencies in mobility in that dorsiflexion and internal rotation of the tibia there. Uh, so th a lot of times you have to work through that calf musculature with some uh, hands-on stuff, some tissue work, or maybe even some dry needling in the area, uh, just kind of attacking trigger points and other areas of tightness that, that limits that mobility. Further is even the knee, so uh, we can test some mobility through the knee, and we just want to make sure that we can actually achieve full knee flexion. And again, a lot of times the issue is um, we can't get to that full knee flexion uh, due to ankle mobility issues, um, and we end up pushing our weight back forward, and we're not allowed, we're not allowing ourselves to keep our weight back to achieve full knee flexion. So we want to test knee flexion. Um, we want to isolate it even on its own. And then if we see some issues there, we want to do some drills that'll actually work on knee flexion quad length and make sure that the quads are not limiting our ability to flex at the knee. Um, so we have some exercises and drills we like to use for that. And here is an example of one that we like to use um, this is the prone knee flexion kind of quad stretch mobility exercise. So what we do here, usually better to use um, a chiropractic bench or even uh, an exercise bench, a PT table, anything like that. Um, more comfortable, but here just for demonstration, I'm using a box. You can use a, a rope, usually a little bit better, but here I'm using a band. You can use either one. Here's kind of a complicated way, just wrapping that band around the ankle to give you some leverage on it. And then as we go forward, it's vital that we keep our non-working leg. So in this case, my left knee, I need to make sure it stays past my belly button. What that does is it pulls my pelvis and it keeps it from allowing this low back to overextend, which would take from our work there. It would also irritate that lower back, right? So this helps keep that pelvis in more of a neutral orientation. As you can see here, we're flexing the hip and here we're extending it 
So if we do the opposite, what that does, it helps keep the pelvis and the low back more neutral. Okay. And so as I come down into this position here, I'm using my leverage with the band there to pull this knee towards my glute. And what that does is that puts that quad and the hip flexors on a pretty good stretch there. Okay. So again, knee needs to stay past my belly button. What the fuck? And here is an example of one. So for this, we'd usually use um, a bench or a chiropractic table or a PT table, usually more comfortable. But for demonstration purposes here, I'm just using a box. Uh, we're going to lay face down. And a rope wrapped around the ankle is usually a little bit better. But here I'm using a band. You can use either one. Just make sure it's wrapped around the ankle and it's got a good, strong hold on it. It's not going to slip off the foot. And what we do here is we want to make sure that this non-working leg, in this case my left leg, my knee needs to stay past my uh, pelvis, okay, or I'm sorry, past my belly button. And what that does is it helps make sure that my pelvis stays neutral, okay. So you can see that my left knee is in flexion, my left hip is in flexion, and my right hip is in extension, right. So these kind of even each other out by doing the opposite. What that does, it keeps the pelvis more neutral. It, it doesn't allow my low back to go into extension. And what that does is it doesn't, it, it won't piss off that low back. Um, everything stays kind of in that neutral position and it allows that quad to be put on a good stretch. So here I am using that band for leverage to pull my heel towards my glute and going to get a very big stretch on the quads and the hip flexors there. Again, knee, my left knee staying past my belly button, helping to maintain that neutral position. Now from here, I can kind of pull my foot or try to extend my working leg. And what that'll do is it, it really, it, now I'm contracting the quads at a lengthened position. I can hold that for five to 10 seconds at kind of a five or six out of 10 uh, max effort. And then I relax. And as I relax, I pull that heel even closer to the glute to get even more of a stretch on it. So we can do that contract, relax, contract, relax um, sort of thing. And working through that mobility, this mobility drill over 45 seconds to a minute, on each side to help make sure that those quads are getting the, the, the stretch that they need and maintaining um, good quad length to make sure that knee flexion isn't a problem for us. Now speaking more about foot pronations, we did some tibia stuff, uh, we did some ankle talus stuff, we did some uh, soft tissue stuff with the quads and the calf muscles. We're going to make sure that that tibial internal rotation is working for us with another drill here as we start to work into pronation of the foot. So pronation of the foot is where you can think of the inside middle part of the foot, uh, the arch kind of dropping down towards the floor as the weight kind of comes onto our middle or inside part of the foot as opposed to the opposite where if we're trying to almost scoop the bottom of our foot up towards our head, that's more supination and the exact opposite, pushing that foot into the ground and rotating it outwards, more of a pro pronation type movement. Okay, so here's a good drill to help work on pronation and ankle dorsiflexion, where we're just using this band around the tibia to help give us some friction for leverage. And what we're doing here simply is with our foot elevated, we're just rocking forward. And as we rock forward, we help guide our tibia into internal rotation where I'm rotating it towards the midline. Okay, so a really great drill here for helping to work and improve that tibial rotation. The heel stays flat on the ground the entire time. Now that's working on some of the bony mechanics of, of pronation at the foot. Um, there's some other ways we can do that as well, but we also want to make sure that we're working on understanding and feeling the force of the foot through the ground. So can we appropriately apply force through the foot into the ground and, and feel what it feels like to pronate and push and create force? So there's some drills that'll work on both of those things for us where we're getting some mobility improvements as well as sensory improvements to feel what it's like to actually pronate and improve our pronation. So an example of this is this drill here where we're on a small wedge and what we want to do here is we have the front half of our foot on that wedge and we're going to put all our weight 
on the head of the first metatarsal. So if you go to the big toe, we're going to go just below it. So just below where the big toe starts, right on that part of the foot. And we're going to have 95% of our weight through there. That's where I want you to think about pushing down into the wedge. We have our pinky toe on the lower edge and our big toe on the higher edge of the wedge. And then we're just going to hold this position for about 30 seconds. Right, One foot, heel off the ground, and we're just pushing. Now that wedge is going to try to push your weight on the outside part of the foot towards the wall. In this case, I want you to resist that by rotating your foot into the wedge. Right, So pushing through that middle part of the foot just exactly where I'm pointing here. Right, So just below that, and we're going to pronate. That's the, the motion of pronation, of pushing all our weight into that middle, midfoot, forefoot, inside edge of the foot. Really great drill for working on sensing pronation and, and working on in improving mobility that will lead to more pronation. Uh, a second drill for this, here's me doing it on the opposite side, is this split squat on a wedge. Again, we're working at about 10 degrees for the wedge, um, so not a great deal of lift there. And all we're doing simply is the same thing as last time. We're going to put all our weight on the inside edge of the heel and that base of that first metatarsal, same spot. And what the wedge is going to try to do is push us towards our outside of the foot, but we're going to resist that, and we're going to have our weight in those two spots I just pointed at there as we lift and, and do it under load now. So we're in a kind of split squat position. We're starting from the ground. I'm going to have the load on the same side as the foot that is forward. So the ipsilateral same side, and from here, we pick up the weight, and we're just going to stand straight up. I want you to keep the weight in that front leg. Okay. Very important that we don't let our knee just shoot back towards our hips, and we kind of stay on top of that first foot. Here's an angle from the front. So I'm keeping my weight on the middle inside part of the foot as I do my split squats. You don't have to load this very heavy. It's not about getting a major quad pump here. This is more about feeling pronation. Right? It's going to try to push you out of pronation with that wedge, and we reflexively will pronate into the wedge. So now we get to sense what it feels like to truly pronate and create some mobility into that ankle and that foot. And this is going to translate great to the golf course when we're pushing into the ground and pushing up to produce force in our golf swing. It's very important. It's a great drill for sensing pronation, creating pronation, and creating ankle mobility. Okay, for this last drill, where we're really working on sensing pronation and putting force in the ground, you're going to love this one. This is the slouching split squat. So my back leg doesn't have to be back too far for this one. And we our starting position is very important. We're going to start with our knee just over our toes. Okay, and that knee angle never changes. We're going to flex at the knee as we go down, but I want you to think that that knee never leaves that position over our toes. From there, we slouch in our upper back. So it's very different from uh, normal mechanics of, of any type of split squat, lunge, or back squat. But we're actually just focusing on our foot. We're going to put all our weight on the inside edge of our foot and in, in our inside edge of the heel and our inside head of our first metatarsal. So the same spots we were working on earlier. Then we slouch, and we're pushing, pushing, pushing into the ground here, um, creating, feeling the force in the inside component of our foot, but we're not letting the outside of our foot come off the ground or our heel come off the ground. There's weight in through here and here, and we're slouching straight down. This knee is staying right over those toes. This knee is flexing, but that knee stays right there, and you're feeling all that force go through this front foot. As you get down to the bottom, this is really important. From here, you're going to think about loading up more and more force into that foot. You're pushing harder and harder and harder into those spots of the foot we were talking about, but without letting your body lift off the ground, right? So you're pushing, but this knee isn't extending yet. You're just pushing, 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 feeling load through the floor. This knee stays off the ground. You have all your weight in that front foot. You're going to push and load for three to five seconds. You're going to feel all your weight and all this energy through that foot, and then you're going to use that tension that you were building in the foot to actually start to extend out of that position. And as you extend out of that position, the knee does not go flying back. The knee stays right over top. And as you're loading, loading, loading on your way down, loading into that inside edge of the foot, all the way through there. This foot doesn't have to be as far back. You're slouching, coming down, feeling tension build through the foot. Knee is staying over the toes. 
And then from here, you're loading even more, loading, 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 pushing all the weight through there, three to five seconds, holding it. Your body might be shaking a little bit, and then you're slowly going to use all that tension that you just built up to push you out of that position. Knee stays over toes, though. So the knee stays right there as you push through that inside edge of the foot and come up out of it, knee staying exactly where it's supposed to be. A very intense drill if you, if you do it right. Uh, go ahead and give it a try. You'll be very surprised to feel um, just how much muscle activity you can build through there and how much foot muscle activity you feel in the bottom of your foot um, as you are working on essentially pronating into the ground and producing and creating force directly into the ground. A great drill to do in the gym that'll start transferring to your swing as you're trying to produce more force up and out of the ground and increase and improve your ankle mobility. So in conclusion, ankle mobility is essential for performing in not only the gym as we work to improve our golf game, but also directly on the golf course in our swing for being able to achieve golf swing positions without having to compensate and for producing force into the ground and feeling us produce and pronate into the ground to help produce force. Both really important. Um, so in closing, this is a great set of exercises to go through. If you've done the overhead deep squat test and you're noticing that your ankle dorsiflexion is lacking, I would go right through all these exercises and drills and start working them into your routine. It's a great way to help improve yourself on the golf course and in the gym. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.